What's up everyone, it's Mark from Silence Tech, I hope you're all having a great week so far. Today we're going to take a look at this high-end pre-built gaming PC and ask the question, are they worth it? Nvidia and CyberPower PC have very kindly sponsored this video and sent out this awesome Infinity 910 RTX gaming PC. Featuring an MSI RTX 3080 Gaming X Trio which delivers some serious performance, capable of 4K60 all day long, even with ultra settings, plus it's my ideal choice for high refresh rate gamers. Nvidia's newest Ampere second generation architecture has also bumped up ray tracing performance and, with DLSS 2.1, the whole package delivers a gaming experience no console could ever match. For the processor, CyberPower PC have installed an Intel Core i9-10850K on the Z490 platform with 10 cores, 20 threads and a maximum turbo frequency of 5.2GHz. It will be more than enough to keep up with the MSI RTX 3080 Trio graphics card. The total price of this build is just over 2K. Honestly, that's a fair ask in price considering they haven't used any cheap parts at all in this build, such as 16GB of HyperX Fury DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz, an MSI MPG Z490 gaming carbon motherboard and this master liquid light 240 CPU all-in-one liquid cooler. CyberPower PC's website also allows you to configure each individual component by simply scrolling down a well laid out list of parts, making it easy to swap out any components that you do not like. The total price for this build is just over 2k, honestly that's a fair ask in price considering they haven't used any cheap parts anywhere. There is a total of 4 120mm CyberPower dual light loop RGB fans in this build, capable of running at a maximum speed of 1350 RPM. I will let you listen to them a little later on. Each fan can be controlled with this handy little remote and you're able to select different fan speeds as well as several RGB lighting effects. Also I can switch the RGB lighting off completely with one single press of a button, very handy. Cable management inside this build is extremely good, there's no horrible ketchup and mustard cables, largely due to the Corsair RM850X 80 Plus gold power supply, an excellent choice. Even the PCIe cables running to the GPU are routed over the top to help with airflow. I must say some extension cables would really finish this PC off nicely. All of the components are housed inside this NZXT H511 mid-tower case. This is literally the H510 just with two front USB Type-A ports instead of a Type-C. For the money it performs extremely well, considering it only draws in front air from the bottom and the right hand side. With that said, the NZXT H511 looks stunning and has been built to be as quiet as possible and it certainly delivers. Here's a noise test with the system at idle and under full load. The MSI RTX Trio 3080 never exceeded temperatures above 76 degrees Celsius. Moving on to performance, I have already done rasterization benchmarks with another build featuring an MSI RTX 3080 Trio graphics card and an i9-10850K CPU, so today I'm going to really heavily focus on ray tracing and DLSS performance, which is perfect for me since I've already been playing Cyberpunk 2077 non-stop. So first up, let's talk about DLSS or deep learning super sampling, yes the AI powered performance enhancing feature that makes ray tracing playable. Honestly, DLSS 2.1 is the best technology NVIDIA has ever released, games will never be the same. I can hardly notice any difference to the resolution on Cyberpunk with quality mode selected. Even without ray tracing enabled, I still leave DLSS on all the time in supported games. With quality mode selected on Cyberpunk, I get around an extra 30 FPS compared to when it's turned off at 4K. It's unbelievable. 
Deep Learning Super Sampling also works extremely well for first person shooter games like Black Ops Cold War. While gaming on my 240Hz monitor, I always cap my FPS to 236 in the Nvidia control panel, but I never hit anywhere near that in Cold War even on low settings. DLSS gives me the performance boost I desperately need to get Cold War running smoothly at all times. I never notice any dips or frame drops at all. The technology is unreal. Call of Duty has never run this well before. Every RTX GPU has dedicated Tensor Core AI processors working to give you the best possible frame rates in supported games, and I cannot see many AAA titles not featuring DLSS going forward. Ray tracing, on the other hand, sends your FPS in the other direction, but the effect looks stunning on CD Projekt Red's latest open world game. Now that most of the bugs have been fixed, Night City has never looked so good. With the RT Ultra preset selected, I was able to hit around 62 to 69 FPS at 2560 by 1440. Not bad considering the game is open world and maxed out. At 4K, my FPS went down to just over 30 FPS. Switching to DLSS performance mode gave me a solid 60 FPS, and since it was at 4K, it still looked surprisingly good. Would I personally use ray tracing? Sure, on single player games. Cyberpunk is the first game I've used it a lot while playing on my 4K TV. The extra immersion ray tracing delivers is very impressive from a technical standpoint. Lighting behaves just like it's in real life, which is why some CGI animated movies look so good nowadays. Even though the effect can be subtle compared to a pre-rendered movie for obvious reasons, Cyberpunk 2077 is definitely still worth experiencing with the technology enabled. Sure, if you're using a high refresh rate monitor you may find and the performance drop too hard to bear, but with DLSS 2.1, performance is starting to really improve with ray tracing enabled. Now for some benchmarks, I'm going to show off what this CyberPower Infinity 910 PC can do in some of the latest games featuring DLSS and ray tracing. Okay everyone, rounding off the video, what is my overall opinion about buying a pre-built gaming PC? Honestly, I've not got a problem with it at all. If someone's not comfortable with building their own PC, this is the only other option they have. Heck, they may start upgrading certain parts in this build and eventually get knowledgeable enough to rebuild their entire system all by themselves. Of course, this PC costs more compared to if you built it yourself, but CyberPower PC, from looking over their work, do a great job. This is far better than those cheaped out so-called high-end PCs you find all over eBay, plus they provide a decent 3-year labour and 2-year part warranty, so if you want to check out CyberPower PC, a link will be in the description down below. As far as ray tracing is concerned, I was impressed with the amount of FPS this build delivered on Cyberpunk 2077. There is a clear increase in ray tracing performance compared to earlier titles overall, but you still need an absolute monster build to get playable frame rates even with DLSS 2.1. Anyway everyone, I really hope you've enjoyed my video showcasing this CyberPower PC. My name's Mark from Silence Tech and I shall see you all very soon guys, goodbye.